Nintendo's the only company I know that people will go crazy over when they learn they get to play 35-year-old games again. While it's no virtual console, Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo Switch Online, is a nifty little thing. But while rediscovering or discovering NES games on the system, even as someone who was never around to experience the NES in its prime, something feels... weird. Literally. Feels weird. The controller is the one connection between you and the game, and some people are die-hard fans of some games. So much so that playing any specific game without the controller they grew up playing it on is equal to spitting on their hands and dipping into a fresh bag of Cheetos before they grab their dinky Spider-Man PS2 controller to get a round of Tekken Tag Tournament in. This special challenge will be interesting to watch for the kinds of people that win EVO with the PlayStation 1 controller. The people who play Halo 1 Anniversary with The Duke. The millions of die-hard fans who just can't play any Smash Brothers game without the GameCube controller. Sometimes you just can't let the past die. Even as good as playing a classic with the newest controller is, you need that authenticity. I'm challenging myself with this. Can I use every generation of Nintendo controller on the Nintendo Switch wirelessly? That last part's important. I realize there are converters built for this stuff, like the names Brook and Rafnet come to mind, but that's too easy. I'm a sucker for wireless convenience. I just want to turn on my Switch, start the controller up, lay back, and get to playing. Let's start with this bad boy. This is my own NES gamepad. It used to be my uncle's. I think he chewed on it or something. The NES gamepad is the most iconic controller. Period. I've never seen so much merchandise take this shape. That Emmy Award winning D-pad, those rubbery start and select buttons, the unmissable action buttons. Yeah, it's an American Famicom, what else could it be? The only thing that's special about this one is that I've gutted it and put this doohickey on it. This is the 8-Bit Doe Mod Kit, an easy to assemble product at $19.99 that will replace the insides of your old NES controllers with one that connects via Bluetooth to your PC, Mac, iOS or Android device, your NES with a special separate adapter, and most importantly for today, the Switch. You used to need another special adapter to connect these to your Switch, but updates from both 8-Bit Doe and Nintendo rendered that false. So now, this little doohickey reads as a Pro Controller. And before you all yell at me, you don't say Nintendo. You say Nintendo. 8-bit do. While we're at it, Jif. So this 35-year-old hunk of plastic gets to play Super Mario Brothers all over again. That... That's not the end of the story. I also have an NES Classic. And I might have degraded this particular collection's price a bit. Yep, I picked up a classic when they were still in stores. I picked up an extra controller for the classic, fully knowing that I had literally no one to play NES games with, and even later than that, I replaced the red sides with 8-bit dough mod kits too. Also, I'm not sponsored! Also, they have mod kits for other controllers that we'll possibly get to later. I'm not sponsored! These kits work the same as the kit for the regular NES controller, but the feel is different. Instead of 35 years of wear and tear, the NES Classic Edition controllers have two years of wear and tear. Or three? Four? I can't, I can't count, I guess. They last for a long time, 10 hours, which sounds pretty meh until you realize you could probably finish the original Super Mario Bros. 20 times in that session. Or Zelda once if you're a schlub like I am. They also come with programming options so the D-pad can work as either analog stick if you want to play games that don't support the D-pad alone. This was mostly built with PC games in mind, or maybe even the weirdo who wants to play other modern games with this thing, but hey, that's still pretty nifty. So, story ended, right? <laughs> yep, that's it. Just, uh, go out and buy these. Nope. These aren't too perfect. There's no real way to use the suspend menu in the NES app, usually bound to the shoulder buttons on a regular Switch controller, so the most authentic way is taken to a whole new level, because there's no save states, no rewind, and in order to change the game you reconnect another controller and press the home button and quit the app to restart and choose a different game. But there is a hotkey for the home button, down in select. Okay. I have a confession to make. I have four NES controllers for the Nintendo Switch. Retro Runbo, anyone? <laughs> okay, I have five NES controllers. These are the Nintendo Entertainment System controllers for the Switch that Nintendo themselves launched. 
You see, when Nintendo Switch Online dropped, they also surprised members with these. These babies came in a two-pack for $59.99 and were built specifically for the NES games on the Switch. The difference is that these actually attach to your Switch like the Joy-Con do, charging and all. This is also the way they sneak in the shoulder buttons for that suspend menu. The app also detects that you're using these special controllers so the extra buttons can act as capture and home buttons too. And yes, I know what you're thinking. The NES app even encourages this, with button mappings that coincide with the placements of those buttons on the Joy-Con. It's not ideal at all, but it's just so... unique. I never want to do this ever again. Let's just run through some games. First off, the first NES game I ever really played. Okay, actually it was anticipation on a system at the YMCA 15 years ago, but before that I played the classic NES series version of Super Mario Bros. Yep, that was the first time I ever saw World 1-1. Yeah, it works. Legend of Zelda? Yeah, they work. Mario Brothers? Yeah, they work. Ice Climber? Balloon Fight? River City Ransom? Adventure of Lolo? Yeah, you know that the NES app works with the classic NES controllers. Let's get weird here. I only have jump and spin jump. Is what I would say if Nintendo didn't add controller mapping to the Switch OS. It's still a little finicky, but hey, I can play Super Mario World with an NES controller. This is still pretty much impossible. I need the spin jump. But it's also still weird. Let's get weirder. It's me, Mario! Luckily, the 8 bit Doe version of the controller has analog stick output as an option, so this isn't unplayable. This is just. unbeatable. <laughs> For me, at least. I feel like a kid who only kept three buttons in mind on the controller when I first played a video game. As a kid, personally, I knew move, jump, punch, that's it. Don't tell me you knew how to long jump or triple jump at age 8. The only exception is that I'm locked into that mindset's control scheme here. I have jump and punch. Okay, I have dive, whatever. Yeah, the further I go into this, the further I break people's minds, so gird your loins. Yeah, this is the same thing, except I don't have a punch. I'm just a mad scientist at this rate. Who knows? Maybe the next game I try will fare better. <laughs> I'm gonna stop you right there. This experiment has turned into an abomination. Someone's gonna find a way to 242 star this. Super Mario Maker 2! Now this... sorta works? I found the Nintendo controllers to work best here, especially with the newer game style's shoulder button usage. It just works flawlessly with Super Mario Brothers, though. If you want an authentic gameplay session for a Mario Maker round, this is pretty neat. Super Mario Odyssey! Okay, I've, yeah, I've just gone through all the main Mario games with this. With future experiments, I'll go through all these again as a control group, but now I'll just try this with other games that I either think would work really well with the controller, or one I'm just really curious to see. Oh yeah, Mario Odyssey sucks with this controller. Sonic Mania works well. I mean... Classic Sonic games only really have one button, so yeah, I think you could have a great existential great time playing Sonic Mania with this. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Speaking of Sonic, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 has a special retro-styled collection of games, and some of them work. Others, you'll need a four-button controller. In all honesty, I really just wanted to try the running. Nothing sounds like NES sports game, more like... <laughs> Through the options menu, you can change the special item button to be a special command, and... Holy shit, this works so well! Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Shovel Knight, but this makes me want to play it again. It just feels right. I know a lot of people played it through with their keyboard or a regular console controller or maybe even a special aftermarket controller with a retro twist. That last part I understand completely. Now that I'm playing it through a bit. This works! Yeah! Smash Brothers works! But it doesn't work well. 
I have jump, attack, and special. No shield. Oh, but I could just use the ones with the shoulder buttons. Taunt city, my friend. You can't be serious. Oh my god, you're serious. Oh my god, you're serious. No, no, stop. Okay, I think I've had my fun. Let's try one more. Undertale is simple enough to run on a friggin' curate coffee maker, but I forgot that its controls are super simple, too. I can see people using this controller to run this game. In fact, it gets my Pleasant Surprise Award for this round. Is there a game you wanted to see but I missed or didn't have? Let me know in the comments. I could feature it in a future video. Also, leave comments for the next video in the series. Tell me what you want to see me try out next. I promise you, it'll be super fun. Closing thoughts? For the NES? I'll give this one an A. The limitations are because the NES controller only really has eight inputs, and considering four of them are directions, it's not a lot to work with. But for the simpler games, it works really well. If you're die-hard, NES app, authenticity, go with the Nintendo official controllers. But from what I can gather, they're real hard to find now, so if you want a great alternative or you need to use it with a game that needs analog input, go with the 8-bit dough mod kits and pick up a cheap NES controller for yourself. Those hotkeys for the different input methods on the stick, the D-pad, or even the hotkey for the home button really made it all convenient. And the extra device support is a plus too. I rarely play NES games to begin with, and these current retro games feel better, but aren't really worth the price of authentic admission for me. But that's just because I'm not a diehard retro fan. If I were a diehard retro game on retro controller kind of person, you can't beat that NES gamepad. For me, it's a novelty, but for others, it may just be a necessity.